This DFS Week 11 Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. We're also brought to you by the SGPN World Cup free roll, $250 cash and a $250 gift card to the winner. Enter today exclusively on the SGPN app. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second money green with my partner of picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I assume we're all living in the same fantasy land. Is this your? Uh, you want to just tout? Do I want to tout, Ryan? You know I'm not one to brag, but when you hit a 90 to one, well I think it was 80 to one when I gave it out. It was 90 to one when I actually got it in. Austin Hooper, two touchdowns, Titans money line parlayed together. What a what an amazing sweat. I was watching the game in the office, and then I saw the first Austin Hooper touchdown, or maybe I was already in the car at that point. But you know, Derrick Henry does the jump pass, which he Derrick Henry probably could have ran it in, gets it to Austin Hooper. Then I'm driving and I hear the I mean that second touchdown where he just threaded the needle. It, it sounded like they the announcers like oh incomplete to Austin Hooper I'm banging the steering wheel I'm like that could have been it and they go wait wait the Titans are celebrating oh my they they're, they're doing an expedited review it's a catch I've watched it a million times it was a catch and then I have to sweat out and then I'm kicking myself is I'm that like, one of those that's a, it's a catch only in the end zone like if no. that's in the if that's like a guy going to the ground on the sideline it's 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 still a catch. I think so, because well, I mean, you know as, what I mean. Assuming he lands in bounds in that going to the sidelines thing, yeah, I think it was because he he had con- possession. He was on the ground. The ball popped out after, but I I would assume he was. That's what I'm touched. saying though, because but that would be like normally if you don't have. But your they football pulled loop. it out. Yeah, that's so. I think you. I think it would have been catch either way. And then I had to sweat out Titans money line. Thanks to you, Aaron Rodgers, for being a complete. He is just the poutiest man in the NFL, but I'm not pouting. I'm touting. It was uh, it was an awesome. Uh, so night. I, I, my, my night was a little different than yours. I, I saw the very beginning uh, of the, the game. We, we, we were on the air when we, when the first touchdown hit with Hilliard shout out moon off. Yeah. And, and shout out to me. I mean, you know, Aaron Rodgers over one and a half touchdowns, easy money. But, but then I, I, uh, you know, my daughter was on the, the high school volleyball team. They had an end of year banquet at this country club. So we were there. We're having some cocktails. I'm not paying any attention to the game. Next thing you know, I go, I, there's not great service. I kind of take a step outside just to kind of re you know, refresh my, uh, my mindset, my mind state for the, this really, really long, uh, amount of speech. It's just like a, it was like a bad wedding. And when it comes to speeches, Oh man. So I went outside, you know, just checked in, uh, with the medicinal Whee, medicinal crowd <laughs> and a couple of the workers were off to uh, around the corner, uh, enjoying a joint. Hello, I, did enjoy, senor. I, I did enjoy that. It was, I was like, Hola. Um, but boy, my phone just starts vibrating and I'm like, well, what's going on? Like, this is fun. And I, I see, uh, I see that Sean has somehow given out Austin Hooper has somehow hit two <gasps> touchdowns and uh, holy shit. I mean, I honestly, I don't, I was trying to go back and rack my brain at the craziest bets we've hit. And like this, this has to go up there with. I mean, obviously we're, we're the tight end, the backup tight end, tight end touchdown system has been in play for a while. Even those, but even the like Jawan Johnson was like thirty-five to one. Well, the, it, it, a it was a two touchdown. B yeah. it was uh, to a team that wasn't exactly utilizing the tight end with a quarterback who might not have it. Uh, three, 
I mean, it was just you parlayed it with the dog on Thursday night. Dog. Anyway, all of that, all of that to say, um, I I think maybe those dog. first half under parlays uh, during the year of the happening could could maybe measure up to that in terms of a single one I mean, single. I, mean, I guess you would probably argue your DFS lineup. Yeah, that was that, that was that kind no of one an copied. Ultimate. By the way, at least people copied this bet. <laughs> yeah, and shout out to all the people, uh, all the guys, random dudes that DM that that they love me. Appreciate that. And then of course, Ryan, it was a sign. Shout out to the listener, Vin <laughs> Elliott on Twitter. I've already DM'd him. You are getting a <laughs> mega uh, gift what? card from the merch store because he was the one who hit me up. Going, you know, I, I I'm thinking I like this uh, Hooper two touchdowns. Wow. And you gave the man credit. No, why would? Because normally the industry, if you work in this industry, you just steal someone else's picks, you make them your own, and you move on with life. Well, I'm always. Are you saying we're full transparency here? I'm always. At the SGPN offices? I'm always down for a a tight end touchdown yeah. parlay, and then I I ran the numbers, and he had what was it? He had like um, 20 catches and. Historically, he had a like nine to ten percent uh, touchdown rate, and he was sitting at zero. So I did think he was due. And shout out to Vin for getting me going on that angle. And then, yeah, so, obviously, if he's gonna do it, you, you think the money line's gonna hit as well. And God bless you, Austin Hooper. Just God bless you. So, uh, yeah, obviously, um, folks, experts in the com- in their relative communities, they host Twitter Spaces to discuss the re- latest news. Maybe it's a, a matchup <laughs> of the weekend if it's a sports thing. I feel like we we need as a as a brand, we need to lean in to the multi touchdown prop market and maybe start. Well, and then maybe that's where the value is. Tight end, deep think. Maybe we do a a, a con like a, a day conference in the off season where we get together and we just ha- come up with new ways to promote the the multiple touchdown and and backup tight end angles. The only the only one I didn't hit was. Uh, uh, Derrick Henry over rushing yards because he got that that big screen I think because he yeah. got 87 yards so I think if he didn't get that massive screen maybe he gets there. Uh, Oconquo, our boy there, hit his over nine and a half receiving yards again. He gets you one big catch a game. AJ Dillon six carries 13 easily catch the under and then um, yeah. It also I just watching the what game. What was my other one? It inspired me to think. Uh, that maybe something we need to look into. It's happened a couple times in the past couple of weeks, but the the running back throws a touchdown markets. Not oh, sure that the the books are are man enough to offer that kind of action mm. to us, but I would be I would love to start evaluating running back to throw touchdown prop markets. Well, when he did that, I was like, th- this this night feels special for Austin Hooper. It has a chance, Ryan. Unfortunately, we were playing. Um, we're playing Derrick Henry. What do you mean? Unfortunately, that pass saved us two points. I know that's what was the thing. It was like uh, so. Sometimes you're mad that because we're playing Derrick Henry and he had a pretty good game, but there was no way he wasn't going to have a good game. We just need Lamar, Christian McCaffrey, Tyler Algier to go off. Great matchups for uh, shout out Algier. To, shout out to Kyle uh, Shanahan for thinking it's a good idea to split carries. Oh Christian my McCaffrey. God. Well, hopefully not this you week. Piece of shit. In Mexico City. Ryan, we got a lot to get to. We're gonna talk DFS Daily Fantasy. Hey, if you're looking to get down on some of these players, aka some sweet player props, you gotta do it over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. That's right. Fire up. Win says uh they sent me a message. No more building on premises. I'm gonna need a building permit, <laughs> Ryan. It's an OSHA violation when you're giving out 80 to one long shots. It's like when the city comes and puts the puts <laughs> the lock on the door. You're like, no, your building's out of code. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash win bet. You literally could have bet a hundred dollars, taken your hundred dollar free bet, put it in the win build a bet, sitting on 8K. What more <laughs> do you want? What more do you want? Are you not entertained, America? So many states, so many ways to win. Spin that parlay wheel. Again, offer subject to change terms and conditions at WinBet that come up to 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you or somebody knows a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Chat, Ryan. Fire, get a little spicy in the chat. I've just been inspired. All right, so let's, let's mental note this, but. 
based on the fact that we now like if we went back and and ran the numbers on all the prop shows and we included the win from yesterday mm. we would be so far in the black it would uh it would have the the levels of infinity we would have uh, escalated that blackness of the money would be had we done a collaborative same game parlay because had we all come oh. together with some shit well yeah i mean imagine <laughs> if we threw in your Aaron Rodgers over two touchdowns. I mean, Moonoff hit on the first touchdown. It's uh oh man, it would have been amazing. I mean, uh, just honestly, the Don the Hilliard uh, had we had you parlayed it with Hilliard, they would have you would have hit the max limit on what. It, I mean, uh, not many books give you the true odds on that stuff, but ha <laughs> had they given you the true odds uh, through the ceiling. All right, well, you want to give out a lineup? Yes, let's talk daily fantasy. Give out some picks. Ryan, I'll kick things off. I, I I was trying to figure out a way not to do this because people are probably bored of my homerism, but this is an awesome bounce back spot for the Philadelphia Eagles offense heading to Indy. Again, I love looking at these non-conference dome games. It's true. That's where things get spicy as far as paying them off. Give me Jalen Hurts eighty two hundred dollars. Let's go. Uh yeah, I mean, this is look, if you guys are new to the show, welcome. Happy you joined us for the 2022 season, but when the Eagles lose, Sean reverts back to what he knows, and that is just the extreme levels of homerism. Yep. Uh, I I don't know if Jalen Hurts pops off the screen to me as much mm. as he does you. If I'm being objective, I I do think it's an interesting week. Uh, Lamar carrying the questionable tag due to the the, the mysterious illness that he seems to catch every couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully he just had to take a shit during practice. We also have, <laughs> we also, we also have the guy I'm going to roll out there, which is Josh Allen, no longer uh, sporting a injury designation. Uh, look, you brought up before the show. Hey, they might cancel the bills game. Yep. Yeah. So a couple things on that front one, that's going to inherently make him a more, a less popular play. If people have that level of concern. So lineups being loaded up now probably don't have it too. Mm. I think if this game is played on schedule, which I don't know the rules with DFS, if the game, if, if they reschedule it for the next day, does the game stay in the slate? Probably not. Um, even if the location is the same, but I, I think this is a sneaky game. Like ownership projections are fairly low across the board in this game. Josh Allen, sub 10 dig sub 10. Um, no one else to note after that. I think Chubb is going to be unpopular. Uh, I just think this is a game that could be a huge shootout. It's not, it's not a non-conference game. Like, like you were talking about, but it's not a divisional game. It's also a massive bounce back game where Josh well, Allen I, I is do being think... made fun of publicly Cleveland, oh. Cleveland suck. Well, just by us. I know that no, no, we're I'm the saying, only ones on that I, I think, Island. But... I think, I think in a weird way, now this is a totally different handicap, obviously from DFS. Cause obviously moving to a dome, uh, versus playing a They're crazy a dome amount of team. snow. This makes them better. I, I would say normally, yes. I would say for the game itself, though, it it kind of makes me like Cleveland more. One, you're playing a road game when you had no idea you were playing a road game. Two, I think there was a version where Josh Allen would run more at home in the cold weather, in the snow, and not try and force the ball. I think he's going to force the ball a bunch, and I think it kind of plays into Cleveland's strength. Like Cleveland is able to slow down when they, since they got Denzel Ward back, I think their secondary and pass defense isn't bad. Their weaknesses is, is running the rock. I don't know if in a dome environment, Josh Allen will be patient enough to run the ball and, and call a bunch of runs. I like my pick has flipped with this, the locate since we record the NFL pick show, uh, we thought this was going to be a weather game. I yeah. thought the way I, 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 I think we all like Cleveland, all those points, I think on the turf in a dome, like this could go bad for Cleveland. We just watched them get blown out. Uh, I, I actually would flip my pick around. Um, I like the bills and yeah, Josh Allen, 8,500. I don't think he'll be popular and he could put up a shitload of points in this one. I, I, I mean, you just watched Tua not need to use Tyree kill a ton and put up a shitload of points on this team. Right, so. I guess the counter would be because Jeff Wilson Jr. was running so well, and because of Raheem Mostert running so well against I, the Browns off a defense that doesn't. Sherfield uh, was run. getting involved. I, I just, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can you can discuss the fact that their offense features a running back, but I think 
it was more just con- like more just there they they were able to move the ball i think the bills will be able to move the ball it's a nice bounce box spot and i think because of the you know the change of location maybe people don't know the location change and they still think it's going to be in snow like that the, the ownership is just going to be down on this game and i i think it could if we if we end the weekend and this is the highest scoring game of the weekend that wouldn't shock me no and i and i guess from that angle that makes sense uh i'm <laughs> first running back I'm going with David Montgomery. Now maybe he ends up catching massive ownership, but rightly so. He's 6100. No Khalil Herbert. I, I as much as I love, I, you know Justin Fields as a fantasy quarterback. Three games with a um, hundred yards rushing. It just it's not sustainable. And I think he is who you know he's a super interesting play. And maybe I will put together a Fields lineup. But having Montgomery and not having any part of their passing game. I think is an interesting pivot and the Atlanta Falcons rush defense is really bad. They're what? 25th in or sorry, 20 uh, they're in the twenties here. Uh, 25th. Yes. In rush defensive DVOA, uh, the bears again, they like running the ball. No Khalil Herbert. I don't know if they really have another guy that's going to eat up all those Khalil Herbert touches. I think it's just going to go to David Montgomery, massive volume game for David Montgomery. So give me him in the dome at Atlanta 6100. You know, I I think you have, you know, I, I I certainly think he'll catch ownership, but he he also, you know, like you highlight, he's got a really good good matchup. So, to your earlier point about this Bills game, I agree with you. I do think they're going to have success on the ground as well just like the Dolphins just did. That's why I'm going to throw Josh Allen and and Singletary in the same lineup. Ooh. I don't plan on just stacking. I plan on getting all the Bills touchdowns here. Uh, Playing the ceiling in this one, Sean. Mm. Give me Singletary. Onslaught. Onslaught. He's only fifty eight hundred. He's only fifty eight hundred. I, you know, I wonder. He might be the guy that I. I would expect he's the guy that catches the ownership on this team. Uh, Maybe not. I'm seeing. uh, Actually, I take that back. I'm seeing projections under six percent. So I really. you know, it, it is relatively early in the week, I guess still, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing all the bills touchdowns. Give me Devin Singletary uh, for 5,800. Uh, my second running back. Give me Jamal Williams at the New York giants, 6,000. He's a, uh, he's a guy they use in the red zone for whatever reason. They seem to not be using Deandre Swift a ton giants do struggle um, with these type of running backs. Damian Pierce had a really good game. It's going to be outdoors. It's going to be cold. I I think you're going to want to. Uh, who knows? I mean, Jared Goff showed up in coolish weather, not as cold as I would expect for the Giants game. But Jamal Williams, I think, has a really good game, and they seem to really love him in the red zone. So, give me Jamal Williams six thousand dollars. So I was noodling on my Dan Jones lineup. Okay. Do I bring it back with Williams Swift or Amon Ross St. Brown? Swift once again will be very unpopular because it doesn't appear like he. I, I just how do you play him? No, point? I he can't. can't right? There's okay. something. It's either injury. I don't know if he's in the doghouse. Um, I know some of those film shows I was listening to, like they were breaking down how efficient he was running and how he's like making bad cuts as far as like seeing the open field. So I don't want any part of him. Again, these might be kind of chalky. Another guy I was considering playing. I do like Kenyon Drake and his matchup against the Panthers. Very interesting. And he's only fifty three hundred dollars. Maybe I do. You, do I should I put Kenyon Drake in here, Ryan? But then I don't know what I do with the the rest of the salary. Honestly. Yeah, I would say if you're not going to use it, don't. Uh, I certainly like Kenyon Kenyon Drake Ravens defense needs to be in my rotation of running back defense stacks for sure. But if you're not going to use the money, I would say, don't do it. What do you think about Garrett Wilson this, this week against the Patriots? I I think it, I think you have to like Garrett Wilson every week. Yeah. Until, until you see him not get a massive volume. All right. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do a little audible here. I'll put in Kenyon Drake. And just to, I'll give you some ownership projections, uh, courtesy of our friends. I was, I was going to bring my Eagles double stack back with, um, oh shit. Never mind. Kenyon Garrett Wilson's 4,900. Well, how much do you have to spend? 4,400. God damn it. I mean, Nick. So Kenyon Drake projected a, a half percent ownership. Oh, wow. Really? Am I missing something here? Do I put in Jahan? Gus Edwards could play. Jahan Dotson, or do I put in uh, Paris Campbell on the bring back? Right. Campbell will be chalky, but he right. has a nice floor. I'll go Jahan Dotson. 
Oh, I mean, there, there you go. I'm trying to win some money. You don't want to bring back. Yeah, don't nah, play Campbell. Bring back sir. Bring back sir. Old school. Um All right, what what were we talking? Where I'll are we go. At? Yeah. Um I jumped ahead, but I hit David Montgomery, Kenyon Drake. What okay, do you got, so Ryan? Your second, you're going to go Kenyon Drake with your, yes, your second runner. After further debate. And he's 5900. I I don't know why I thought he was cheaper. All right, so again, I I did spend a little bit more time this week since we were recording a little later to to look at the ownership uh, percentages and and hopefully figure it out, uh, work work some stuff out that way. And and one guy that I was shocked to see how low the ownership is, uh, similar projection to Devin Singletary actually. So a couple running backs uh, under six percent. Give me Dalvin Cook, eight K mm. against the Dallas Cowboys again. Wow. Is, so is he is he low owned because of his price? You think? Yeah, I think price. Yeah. I think Jefferson just had a big game. Easy, well, Jefferson- easy, easy to get Cousins in there, which means you're probably stacking with a receiver. I really like that because you get one, you get leverage off of uh, Justin Jefferson his ownership, and two. I mean, he had that nice long run against the Bills. Like it seemed like his uh, he it kind of had a spring back in his step. And yeah, so I like that a lot. 14 carries only, five targets, still produced 26 points. Um, yeah, so I I think the price keeps his ownership down. I think it creates one of the, you know, three here's my rotation of fun running back defense stacks this week. Kenyon Drake and uh Ravens where I uh, where I need to be very different cuz I've gotten chalky with either the quarterback or the receivers. I love uh, going against your Eagles with Colts defense and Jonathan Taylor. Um, we've seen we've seen some of the weakness in in the ability to to stop the run from the Eagles, and uh, and this one Dalvin Cook and obviously I'll, I'll remove the tease around who I'm playing at defense, but just what has the Minnesota Vikings defense done consistently all year? Gotten after the passer. Yep. C- created opportunities to score. I like no. So and, and Dalvin Cook as my running back. I don't even think I've played him all year. But what I've done so far is I've given you three players all playing in a dome on a weekend where weather is probably going to have an impact in a couple games. Ryan, you know it's going to have an impact on your finances. Rocket Money. That's right. Just go to uh, RocketMoney.com/sgpn to get started today. Think of all those subscriptions you have that are just. Seven ninety nine here, four ninety nine here. You may not even notice them on your bill, but those add up to, I mean, eighty bucks a month, two hundred bucks a month, and then you're looking at thousands of dollars a year that you're just a lot of those you don't even use, or maybe you downloaded one song or you tried the free trial and then never used it again, and you're just letting money fly out the door. Don't do that. Rocket Money makes it so easy. They identify all your subscriptions, your reoccurring payments, make it super easy to cancel. We're talking one but one button cancellation. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash SGPN. Rocketmoney.com slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by Babbel. Again, Babbel is the perfect, unique holiday gift for someone in your life who's looking to learn a language. Uh Babbel's great. I mean, over 10 million subscribers. So you know um, people like it as soon as they get going, and why wouldn't you? Ten minutes a day, next thing you know, three weeks later, you're able to have a real-life conversation in another language. Maybe um, trying to meet a lady who's Spanish, French, Italian, or German. How awesome would it be to be able to talk to her in her native language? This is awesome if you're going out traveling and seeing the world. People <laughs> always appreciate you know, being able to talk a little uh, you know, football in Espanol, or maybe you're going to the world cup. You want to brush up on some, sp- uh, some, whatever, Hola. whatever language they speak over there. Uh, very unfortunate. You saw Ryan there, no beer sales. They made that decision. And I guess Budweiser is a $75 million. How, how does that work? I, I think Qatar just does whatever they want. No, no. I mean, like, how does that work? If you're Budweiser, you just say, oh, I don't know. Fuck, like, fuck you. You're out seventy-five million dollars right now. Get up to fifty-five percent off your subscription when you go to babbel.com/sgp. That's b-a-b-b-e-l.com/sgp for up to fifty-five percent off your subscription. Babbel language for life. Now we're talking receivers. Obviously, I'm going to the big dog himself, oh. AJ Brown, eight thousand dollars. He does have the Q next to his name. I think he's going to. Uh, I think he's a full start, good to go, coming off his worst game of the year in a dome against this Colts defense. Is yes, he a full sir. go? Yeah. Confirmed. Eagles insiders confirming. 
I mean, they've they've limited him in practice. It's not, it's not what I've heard. What have you heard? Oh, that he'll that the injury could impact his performance. I don't think so. Okay, that's why I was asking Eagles Insider to confirm. I mean, no one is nervous about um, about him playing. He okay. seems pretty healthy. Got it. So yeah, AJ Brown, eight thousand. Let's All right. go. Step digs, easy. Uh, give me uh, my my second stack, I guess you'd call it, of Josh Allen, eighty three hundred. What what are we gonna? What do you want to talk about? Is sixteen targets last week? Yeah, twelve catches. Uh, I mean, I get it. You, it's probably not the most contrarian. Like this is probably the uh, highest owned piece of the Bills situation that I've rolled out so far, and ETR is projecting nine point eight on digs even. Which again feels low. Uh, maybe it goes up once people realize this is being played in a dome. But Steph Diggs, I he's another guy that pops on like the the cash game optimizer stuff too. Uh, my second receiver. I'm doing the Eagles double stack. I I was thinking in my head, hey, who's gonna be that tight end that replaces Dallas Goddard? I don't know if there is. Obviously, there's no one that can replace Dallas Goddard, but I don't even know if there's going to be one tight end that replaces him volume wise. It's going to be multiple guys. You're I think saying? it's going to be. I think we might get some Calcaterra. You might see some Tyree Jackson. You might see some Jack Stoll. Interesting. I, I mean, I would wait if you're going to play an Eagles tight end and you want to go super cheap for twenty five hundred. Uh, hit me up on the. <laughs> oh, I'm saying on the pregame show. I think we'll have a better yeah. idea because they brought up Tyree ja- Tyree Jackson. It's funny to, the way that you said it. If you're planning on doing this, hit me up. Hit me up. I'm here. <laughs> Tyree Jackson. They pulled him off pup. Now we'll actually see if he a, he's activated between now and then. I think that has an impact on it. All that being said, I think Zach Pascal is interesting, but I'm going uh, Quez Watkins at 3,700. We saw his deep playability. I think uh, Nick Sirianni. He's very much a player's coach. I think he wants to give Quez some redemption opportunities against his Colts defense and. I think he's going to get some of those Dallas Goddard targets. Dallas Goddard, they ran a ton of screens too, and I think I wouldn't be surprised if some of those screens are replaced by Quez Watkins. Maybe Zach Pascal. This, this is wild. But Pascal and Quez Watkins' price is almost similar, and Quez Watkins gives you the deep ball. So I'm taking wet Quez at so 37. I was coming into this situation wanting to ask you, is it Quez or do we get really strange? Because my angle was Quez. It every. He gets manufactured chip. Yes. He's always been a guy that, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe he doesn't understand the play, the whole playbook, but he seems to get be one of those receivers they want to run plays for. I, I again wanting to play guys in domes, wanting to get uh, get the weather off my card. I did see the Eagles Colts game as a game that I wanted a little piece of because you know there's going to be a couple touchdowns and Quez Walk. I mean, it made sense. I had I did have to. I don't know though. So it, you're saying Quez Quez is a better play than Well, here's the thing. I don't think either Quez or Zach Pascal catch much ownership, right? So the fact that their price is that similar and he has what could really screw it up is if if Pascal gets any sort of red zone stuff, which I wouldn't be sh- shocked if he does, but the the mm. upside of the Quez Watkins deep ball to me is what you give the nod. I mean, it's only two hundred dollars price difference. Yeah. All right. I'll roll with it. I like the angle. I mean, Pascal. We'll see. I I think, and it's a revenge game for Zach Pascal. But I'm sticking with Watkins at thirty seven hundred. I was going back and forth. Kramer. So what do you got receiver wise? Have you how many have you given out? I gave out digs. Okay. We'll see now. Now I'm making some late swaps here. Based. Let me see what I got here. I don't think it fits. Should I do it anyway? Let's see. Boop, 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 boop. All right. While you're working yeah, on you that, you give out your second guy. Paris Campbell. Uh, so here's what I was going back and forth with. I I said maybe I'll put in Jahan Dotson. I'm a little shaky on that. Um, Paris Campbell also similar price range. Do I go all the way down to Nico Collins at 4100? Nico. I don't necessarily need it, but. I do think this is a letdown spot for that Washington team. And we saw Washington, you know what? I'm going Nico because we saw Quez be, be able to get behind those Washington receivers. Maybe Davis Mills hits us with the deep ball. Nico Collins, tons of targets last week. I think they're going to go out of their way not to hit Brandon Cooks. And 
Washington actually has a pretty good rush defense. So I don't think Damian Pierce is a great play this week. What's your take? Uh, I think Nico might be popular. I think really, I think Nico got 10 targets last week. I think if anything, I was, I was considering, I was kind of having a conversation with myself about how brand is Brandon cooks going to be the contrarian guy this week. Like, is that, is that a reasonable take? Um. Anyway, what I, I just don't think they they like Brandon com, Cooks. Coming back to, I, I, yeah, I guess I didn't say this clearly, but coming back to you giving out Quez Watkins first time, I think in the history of the show, we both had Quez. We both have Quez Watkins. Okay, so you are lacking in Quez well, Watkins. I, yeah, and I, and I, I like I said, I, I thought I was gonna try. I was trying to because isn't this a Zach Pascal revenge spot? Like, no, I mean, is the, there not like isn't is Zach Pascal makes sense? The thing is, you're getting cute. Uh, you're getting. Zach Pascal, I think, is a better play if you're worried about everyone playing Quez Watkins, but not no one's gonna play. I don't think there's a difference in ownership. They're both gonna be super. I, I know that's but I'm asking, like, which is the guy that's gonna get the touchdown? Like, do they find Pascal away into the end zone so he can score in Indy against his former team? It's possible. I'm still sticking with okay, Quez. I'll stick with Quez too. My sec my third receiver then. But 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 now do I go? Do I go back to Paris Campbell? My original thought, just because of the target share. Paris I, Campbell is going to be very chalky. But you think? Do you I'll care go, about being chalky? I'll go Nico Collins. I like Nico. I'm gonna. Nico say might also be chalky. I like. Do you him. want? Do you want a ownership projection? I feel good about it. All right. I won't tell you then. What do you got, Ryan? Are you on your tight end now? No, no. So I so Diggs receiver one, Quez receiver. Two. Okay, who's your third? Because of the conversation, third is that game stack, and I think I, I'm I'm pretty sure based on you know again these projections that Pittman is not going to have the ownership that Paris Campbell does. Okay, uh, and again, so it's just it's hard. It was hard for me to put Pittman in there because <laughs> fucking Matt Ryan trash, but. You know, you you look at the target game, and once again, he's coming off a game where he had nine targets, seven catches, only twelve points. He probably needs to find the end zone to really get paid off here. But this this could be a higher scoring game. I'm gonna take Pittman here. I, I think people will. To me, Jonathan Taylor and Campbell are more appealing at their prices, and so I wonder how popular Pittman will be. Pittman 6100. All my players are playing in a dome, Sean. Wow. Colby would be disgusted if he knew just, this. Why? Why have the variable of the weather when you don't need it? No. Or I, the variable of Davis Mills or Taylor Heineke, for example. Don't need it. Baker Mayfield. Don't need it. All right, move it over to my tight end. I'm going with Greg Dolchich. Oh. 3,800 at home against uh, the Raiders. He continues to get a ton of targets. The the Broncos continue to be limited with their pass catchers. It feels like Very everyone's limited. heart. Everyone's hurt. Russell Wilson sucks. I, but Dolchich is like one of the few athletic guys. He is a rookie tight end, kind of a dud last week. Yeah, but he fairness. got he got some targets. Uh, or do we go Njoku? Because I have I can't get up to Njoku, Ryan. <sighs> I mean, talk to me about Njoku. How healthy? My do we bring think back is? is Njoku. Okay, so you like Njoku? I well, so my bring back was going to be either him or Cooper. Um, Chubb is interesting to me, but I think just in a in a game where Josh Allen goes nuclear, I, I don't know if Nick Chubb is is getting it done all the way, and he's pretty expensive. So in Joku, I went, I, I caught some, and shout out to this is what Twitter is great for, just video of him returning to practice, looking like an athlete running around out there. Um, I'll be able to pivot here um, based on my, my lineup construction. I am going to roll out two tight ends this week. So if, if Njoku ends up being a late scratch or anything like that, um, I'll leave space for Donovan people's Jones, for example, but I think Njoku will be fine. We saw how involved he was in that offense. We saw how often Brissett was. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go to and Njoku because I, I want to avoid division games. Whenever what possible. do we love? What do we love playing guys? Coming off injury with the key yeah, next to their let's name. Let's go. And Joku. And we have him in our uh ETH league, so I'm on board. We do need him back. So right. he, he is my tight end. He's my bring back. So again, Josh Allen, Singletary Diggs, bring back of Njoku. Ooh, uh Jack Ryan, three sixty nine says Hawkinson gonna break the slate. I don't mind that play. He's you pay for him though, fifty three hundred. 
does have a sweet haircut. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can break the slate at 5,300 as a tight end. Maybe you play him. Honestly, the probably the way you play him is Kirk Cousins, Hawkinson, and then like KJ Osborne and no or like no Justin Jefferson. All right. So the ownership projections for the Vikings, it, Kirk Cousins eleven percent, Justin Jefferson thirteen percent, Dalvin Cook five percent, Hawkinson seven percent. So certainly opportunity there. Uh, it's an interesting play. I don't hate it. The tight ends were weird this week, and I and I ended up playing two. So you've given out your tight end in Joku, my tight end also in Joku. Who's your flex? Alvin Kamara, seventy six hundred. You're not supposed. What are you doing? You can't put. You saved all the money and put it. Put him yeah. down there. Uh, he's he's had a really good fantasy season, kind of. And what I mean by like, he started out pretty good. The past couple of games though, he has been ice cold. I mean, a- and he's not. Uh, only three catches in his past couple of games. Before that, it was like nine, seven, six, double digit carries. This is a fade of this Rams defense on the road. Again, Ryan, as we mentioned, looking to get involved in some dome games here. They have to, it, their, their offense has been horrible when they don't get him involved. I, I think this is a get right spot for Alvin Kamara at home Love against it. the Rams defense. That's just horrible. Uh, he's, it's, and it also creates a fu- very nice running back defense stack. The, yeah, the Saints are a fun play this week against the Rams team that is really quickly turning into like a borderline USFL team. And their their rush DVOA looks pretty good, but their pass DVOA is bad. And also like eye test, I mean, it's like injuries. Just they seem to be falling apart. The Saints tend to do well against bad offensive lines. Yeah, that's that's kind of the handicap. All oh, right, for your defense, yeah. No, no, yeah. Just I'm just saying, just in general, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is that not what you were talking about? The Saints defense. No, I was talking about Kamar. Oh, okay. Seventy six hundred. My no, defense. No, no. You were talking about defensive ratings. Oh, I was talking about the Rams oh, defensive God, ratings. God, they God. actually do. Their rush defensive DVOA isn't horrible, but I don't know, man. Just like eye test, this team seems to have kind of given up. Yeah, that could that could be gimmicky too, based on how they played. Yeah. Or how they've had to play. They've been down a lot. Yeah, team's just not running. Um. Well, no. That. Like, uh, yeah. I, I guess that would be backwards. All right, uh, flex for me, two tight ends. Give me another Buffalo Bill, Dawson Knox. Ooh, Knox locks triple stack. He's only thirty two hundred. If they're gonna score a shitload of points, he gets a touchdown. Uh, that's just the way it works. He's also uh, he's he's also looked healthier and healthier each week. Uh, another guy that's not gonna carry a ton of ownership. So double tight end and Joku Knox, same game, tight end correlation heavy here. Heavy, Sean. I'm playing five guys from the same game. Let's onslaught go. lineup. Five. So five. wait, you have a double bring back? No, I have a triple stack. Triple Singletary stack. digs Knox with Njoku on the bring back. So that's wait. You have uh, so wait. That's four then, right? Singletary digs Knox with a bring back of Njoku. Oh, and then Josh Allen. And then Josh Allen. You're insane. Uh, I love it. That's how you win a million, Sean. Ryan, t- I I was shocked. How is the Steelers defense twenty three hundred dollars? It was one of my the first defenses I wanted to play. They're at home in an ugly division game, and you have T.J. Watt who can fuck up their <laughs> offensive line. I would price them at like thirty five hundred. This is crazy. I mean, obviously, I like the the Ravens defense as well, but they're four thousand. I yeah, I don't know. I, I I would I would guess that they're they'll be popular defense. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm I still twenty three hundred bucks. Like I have to play it. What'd you do for defense? Do you have any extra money? I have two hundred dollars. Mm, okay. Uh for my defense, I I maintained full correlation. Vikings, twenty four hundred. Hmm. Um again, wanted to be different and wanted to get a I mean, they've they've consistently rushed the passer. And so you know, Dak. Hopefully, we can get bad Dak, create a touchdown, help Dalvin Cook just grind, grind the clock. Uh, Ryan, yeah, no, they, that's a. I mean, again, Dak on the road. I love it. Uh, shout out to Ryan Pagani. Dong. He uh, coming in with the dog. Pagani. Pagani. Both my QBs are out this week. I have the choice of Heineke, Dalton, Mariota, Pickett, and Matt Ryan. I, I'm, 
Mariota. I, I actually really like Mariota. Yeah, at home against a Bears defense, it's pretty sus, as the kids say. Mm, look at you. I, I think Mariota. Hey, I think he has to realize that Desmond Ritter is nipping at his heels. They're close to starting Desmond Ritter, and when you seriously, oh, you've yeah. heard that? Yeah, because Arthur Smith just came out and said, "What are you talking about? We don't have a we we don't have a quarterback situation." Right. I mean, I guess maybe because people are asking him about it. He's like, right. "What do you mean we're not starting this guy?" Right. So, but that okay. means. Oh, I mean, I, the first, I, the first I watched it and I got it as like, he's at, why are you even fucking asking this question? Our quarterback's fine. The first step in a QB controversy right. is the fans and media asking for the backup quarterback. What I'm saying is I think Mariota could feel pressure to run the ball and ball out a little bit. So I, I like them even more. They're also just a game out of the division. So maybe the the urgency to win a game and we get in the fucking playoffs. Well, yeah, I, this either is, way, I think he's, st he's not starting a team. He's not starting a starting quarterback next year to start a year. So that's so. what I'm saying. I, I think that, you know, maybe he's hearing the rumors, whatever it is, his back is against the wall. Why are you starting rumors about my guy, Marcus? <laughs> right, right. That acts like I'm talking about his children over there. When I say Marcus Mariota might get uh, nah, I'm with Arthur. I stand he, with Arthur Smith. His back is against the wall. Matt Ryan. <laughs> I, I think is a, I just don't, there's no rushing upside. Don't let last week fool you. Oh, Jesus. Heineke's interesting, but I feel like they're just going to run it down the Texans throats. Dalton. Da uh, no, thanks. I mean, the, the defense is Dalton's the uh, like Dalton's so, interesting, but why would you not take yeah, Mariota's a legit runner? If this was DFS, Dalton would be interesting. Uh, if this is a a managed situation, like Mariota's the floor, wh who's the ceiling? Mariota, because I think, you think the, he's the ceiling as well. I see. I I I feel like I would argue that uh, you know Pickett or Heineke could be the ceiling, but I would play Mariota like nine times out of ten there. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can get a running quarterback at home in a dome against a bad defense. I think he's a lock to get you 10 to like 23 points, 25 yeah. points. And I don't know if anyone has a higher ceiling than 25. Oh, the other, I mean, yeah, maybe, but the very, what do they call it? Skinny tail, very skinny tail on those uh, distributions. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll, I'll walk through my lineup real quick. Jalen hurts, David Montgomery, Kenyon Drake, AJ Brown, Nico Collins, Quez Watkins, David and Joku, Alvin Kamara, and the Steelers defense Kramer. Oh, you should have listened to the fucking show. Josh Allen, Dalvin Come on, Cook. There was some swapping going on. D Josh Allen, Dalvin Cook, Devin Singletary, Steph Diggs, Michael Pittman Jr., Quez Watkins. First time in show history we're both on Quez Watkins. David and Joku, Dawson Knox, double tight end, and then give me the Vikings defense. Saved. I got a hundred dollars left over. All right, that'll do it for the show. Hey, make sure to tune in to our pregame show Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. We'll answer all your late DFS fantasy gambling questions. Take your calls on the Discord audio channel, sports gambling podcast.com slash Discord. Uh, still have time. Sunday, the World Cup kicks off. Get in on our free roll uh, World Cup contest, $250 cash and a $250 gift card up for grabs. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan definitely gave out a million dollar lineup this week. Dong. Kramer. Let it ride. Terrific snatch. <laughs>